In today's society, we seem to know pretty much anything we want to know. With one click of the button on our phone, we can find out almost anything through Google. But there are some people in history who have somehow evaded this and are still mysterious. And today, we're gonna talk about those people. Starting with the Babushka Lady. The Babushka Lady is a nickname given to an unidentified woman present during the assassination of President John F. Kennedy in 1963. She was called the Babushka Lady because she was seen wearing a headscarf similar to those typically worn by elderly Russian women known as babushkas. Her identity remains unknown, but she gained attention because she was seen photographing the events during the assassination, and her photographs have never been publicly identified or recovered. The Babushka Lady was seen in several films and photographs taken during the assassination, standing on the grass between Elm and Main Streets, and she can be seen in the Zapruder film as well as in photographs by other bystanders. Despite extensive investigations and a call by the FBI to locate her, she never came forward and her photographs have still never been found. Her presence and the mystery surrounding her photographs have led to much speculation and are a part of a much larger body of conspiracy theories surrounding the whole Kennedy assassination. Which, by the way, are all real because Kennedy, uh, inside job. Or the Mafia. Or, I don't, dude, I don't even know, I don't even know. I thought it was just funny. <laughs> Yasuk. Yasuk's story is pretty cool and kind of unique in history. He was an African guy who ended up in Japan in the 1500s, which was pretty rare back then. Historians think he might have been from Mozambique or Ethiopia. He originally came to Japan with an Italian missionary, probably as his bodyguard or something. When he got to Japan, he turned a lot of heads because he was really tall and looked so different from the Japanese people at that time. Oda Nobunaga, a big-time Japanese lord, noticed him and was super interested. Nobunaga was known for being pretty open-minded and he was fascinated by Yasuke's strength and his height. Nobunaga and Yasuke actually hit it off and Yasuke ended up being the first African samurai. That's a big deal because being a samurai was like pretty prestigious in Japan. Yasuke wasn't just a token figure, he was respected and took part in some pretty important events during Nobunaga's rule. His story's got a bit of mystery to it. After Nobunaga's death, what happened to Yasuke isn't really clear. Some say he went back to being a servant, others think he might have kept a low profile in Japan. But either way, his story kind of stands out, like an African samurai in 16th century Japan is not something you hear about every day. Nikola Tesla Nikola Tesla was an absolutely fascinating guy. Born in 1856 in what's now Croatia, he was a genius inventor and a bit of a mad scientist type, you know? Tesla had this incredible mind for electricity and mechanics, which put him way ahead of his time. He moved to the US in the 1880s, and that's where he really started to shine. Tesla worked with Thomas Edison for a bit, but they had different ideas. Wait, am I the only person that thought that Thomas Edison lived in like the 1700s? That's not just me, right? Like, I thought he was like around when like, Benjamin Franklin was around or something. Am I stupid for that? I think I am. Anyways, Tesla was all about alternating current, AC, while Edison was about pushing direct current, DC. This led to the famous War of the Currents with Tesla and Edison going head to head. Spoiler, Tesla's AC eventually won out because it was safer and it could travel over longer distances. One of the coolest things about Tesla was his wild inventions. He came up with the idea of wireless communication way before it was a reality. Imagine he was thinking about Wi-Fi and smartphones back in the 1900s. He also worked on things like the Tesla coil, which is being used in radio technology still. And he had a hand in early x-ray experiments. Tesla was a bit of an oddball too, he had some like quirky habits and was pretty reclusive. Despite his brilliance, he didn't have much business side, so he ended up dying pretty much broke in New York in 1943. But the legacy he left behind in science and technology is just mind-blowing. And I think he's on this iceberg because there like isn't a lot of information about him, because he was like really like reclusive and stuff. So not many people know like really like anything about his actual life other than just like his accomplishments. It's kind of crazy. Tank Man. Picture this scene in Beijing 1989, right after some really intense protests in Tiananmen Square. Also, is that a Taylor Swift reference? The government had just cracked down on these pro-democracy demonstrators. It was a pretty rough situation. Then comes this ordinary guy, just an everyday person. He ends up standing in front of a line of tanks. Yeah, actual military tanks. And he's just carrying his shopping bags. The tanks try to go around him, but he keeps like shifting his position, blocking their path. And the crazy part is that nobody knows who he was. This guy just pops up out of nowhere, makes his huge statement of defiance, and then disappears into history. His identity, what happened to him afterwards, is all a mystery. And the world watched this happen, like there's a photo of him in front of these takes that went viral. But nobody knows who he is. But it made like a big, uh, it was, it was, it was like a big moment for like the, uh, you know, fight back for democracy or whatever. Gregory Rasputin Gregory Rasputin was a Russian mystic who became influential in the royal court of Tsar Nicholas II. He was born in 1869 in Siberia and started off as a peasant. Rasputin is best known for his close relationship with the family of the Tsar, especially for his claimed ability to heal the Tsar's son, Alexei, who suffered from hemophilia. 
His influence grew so strong that he started to play a significant role in the political scene, which wasn't well received by everyone. Many in Russian high society and politics didn't like Rasputin. They thought that he had too much influence over the Tsar and his family, and rumors spread about his unconventional religious practices and supposed immoral behavior. His presence at court was one of the factors that contributed to the declining credibility of the Tsar's regime. Rasputin's life was filled with controversy, and his death in 1916 was just as dramatic. He was murdered by a group of nobles who were worried about his influence over the royal family. The details around his death are pretty wild. There were reports of him surviving multiple attempts in his life in a single night before he finally died. But there's not really much known about like that night or most of his life. Zodiac Killer the Zodiac Killer is an unidentified serial killer who operated in Northern California from the late 1960s to the early 1970s. His identity remains unknown and he is linked to at least five murders and two attempted murders in the San Francisco Bay Area. The first confirmed murders attached to Zodiac Killer occurred in December 1968 when two high school students were shot and killed in Benicia, California. The Zodiac Killer was known for his cryptic messages sent to the press and police, taunting them with clues, ciphers, and boasts of murder. He often even telephoned police departments to report his crimes. His letters included four complex ciphers, of which only one has been definitively solved. The solved cipher stated that he was killing to collect slaves for the afterlife, though it didn't reveal his identity. The Zodiac's victims were often young couples in secluded areas, although he also attacked a lone male cab driver. His methods of murder varied, he used both guns and knives, and notably during one attack at Lake Berryessa, he wore a distinctive costume featuring a symbol that he used in his written correspondences like to the departments of police and to the news stations and stuff like that. The investigation into the Zodiac Killer involved multiple law enforcement agencies and generated massive media attention. And despite numerous suspects and extensive investigations, the case remains one of the most infamous unsolved mysteries in American criminal history. And also David Fincher made a movie about it and he's like the best filmmaker ever, so. D.B. Cooper. On November 24th, 1971, an individual who later became known as D.B. Cooper hijacked a Boeing 727 aircraft during a flight from Portland to Seattle. This mysterious figure, dressed in a business suit, handed a note to a flight attendant claiming that he had a bomb. His demands were specific, $200,000 in cash, about equivalent to around $1.2 in today's money four parachutes, and a refueling truck ready in Seattle. Upon landing in Seattle, Cooper's demands were met. He received the ransom and parachutes, and in exchange, he released the 36 passengers on board. Intriguingly, he kept the pilots, the flight engineer, and a flight attendant. With the crew still on board, Cooper directed the plane to take off again and head towards Mexico City. During the flight, Cooper did something extraordinary and daring. He parachuted out of the plane with the ransom money. This escape occurred in the air over the dense forest of the Pacific Northwest, somewhere between Seattle and Reno, Nevada. Despite extensive searches, neither Cooper nor his remains were ever found, making his escape one of the most legendary in criminal history. The FBI started an intensive manhunt and investigation, which became one of the longest and most exhaustive in the agency's history. Despite analyzing hundreds of leads and considering numerous suspects, the true identity of D.B. Cooper is still unknown, and the case was eventually officially closed in 2016. Aleister Crowley Aleister Crowley, born Edward Alexander Crowley, was a highly influential and controversial figure in the early 20th century. His life and work have been a topic of interest, debate, and speculation for over a century. Crowley was born into a wealthy British family and raised in a strict Christian household. He attended Trinity College at Cambridge University, where he began exploring occultism and mysticism. His early adult years marked a departure from his conservative upbringing and led to a lifelong pursuit of esoteric knowledge and practices. Crowley is the most famous for his role in developing the philosophy of Telema, which is based on the principle of do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. He was also a member of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, a secret society that practiced ritual magic. However, he eventually broke away from the Golden Dawn and formed his own esoteric organization, the AA, which stands for Argentium Astrum, and later became involved with Ordo Templi Orientis, which is also known as the OTO, where he adapted his rituals to Ptolemaic principles. Crowley was a prolific writer, penning numerous books, poems, and articles on magic, mysticism, and Ptolema. His works include The Book of the Law, which he claims is dictated to him by a spiritual entity named Iwas, and Magic and Theory and Practice. His influence extended into various fields, including literature and the arts, and he was a figure of fascination in popular culture. Crowley's lifestyle and beliefs were considered scandalous at the time. He openly practiced sex magic, experimented with drugs, and was bisexual at a time when homosexuality was illegal in the UK. His behavior and his writings led to widespread criticism, and he was often labeled as the wickedest man in the world by the press. Bro had it going on, dude. Bro was bisexual and horny in like the early 1900s, and he was like, you know what, I'm just gonna make my own little like <laughs> religious cult, bro. <laughs> and then if anybody tells me I'm wrong, what are you gonna do? You're gonna argue with I-Iwis? 
the spiritual entity Iwis? I didn't think so. Buckethead. Buckethead is an American musician, predominantly a guitarist, known for his distinctive stage persona and prolific output. He has released over 300 studio recordings, more than any other guitarist. His real name is Brian Patrick Carroll, and he was born on May 13th, 1969. He is recognized for wearing a KFC bucket on his head, from which he derives his stage name Buckethead, and for his expressionless white mask. His music spans various genres, including progressive metal, funk, blues, bluegrass, ambient, and avant-garde music. Buckethead is particularly noted for his eclectic and innovative approach to playing guitar. He employs a wide range of guitar techniques and is known for his rapid finger tapping and intricate shredding. In addition to his solo work, he has collaborated with a wide variety of artists and bands, including Guns N' Roses, with whom he was a member from 2000 to 2004. Beyond his guitar skills, Buckethead is also a multi-instrumentalist. He plays bass guitar, banjo, and piano, and has shown interest in film and storytelling through his music. His performances often include complex multimedia shows. Despite his significant presence in the music scene, Buckethead maintains a very, very private personal life. And much about him remains shrouded in mystery. Like, nobody really knows who he is, you know? Like, well, I guess they know his name, but like, they don't really know, like, they don't know the man behind the mask. That's what the mask is. Y'all dream fans? <laughs> I hope not. Man in the Iron Mask The Man in the Iron Mask is a legendary figure from French history whose story has become a mix of myth and historical fact. He was a prisoner arrested in 1669 and held in various French prisons, including the Bastille and the fortress of Pignerol. His identity was kept secret as he was always masked, and this led to widespread speculation and intrigue about who he really was. The most notable aspect of his imprisonment was the mask that he wore. Historical accounts suggest this mask was made out of black velvet. The popular culture often depicts it as iron, hence his nickname. The mask was used to hide his identity, which remains unknown to this day. The man in the iron mask died in 1703, and his burial records identified him as Marchioli. But this did not clarify his true identity. Theories about who he might have been include a twin brother of King Louis... Oh gosh, Roman numerals. Um, XIV, 10, 4, 14. Or a disgraced nobleman, or a high-ranking military officer who just fell out of favor. The mystery surrounding the Man in the Iron Mask has inspired numerous literary and cinematic adaptations. With Alexandre Dumas's novel, the Vicomte of Bragelon, ten years later, being the most famous. In this work, Dumas portrayed the prisoner as the identical twin of Louis XIV, though there is no historical evidence to support this theory. The true identity remains unknown, and it is one of the greatest unsolved mysteries in French history. You know what's another big mystery in France, I think? Like one of the biggest French mysteries, even a bigger one than this one? is why people still live there. That's a that's a pretty big mystery, I think. Let me know guys in the comments. Why do you why do people still live in uh, in Fran France? <laughs> now you know what guys, if y'all made it this far, answer the question of the day. What is your favorite Okay, yeah. Let me know. Techno Viking. Techno Viking is an internet phenomenon that originated from a video clip from the 2000 fo uh, 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 parade in Berlin, Germany. Sorry guys, I, I, I don't cuss on this channel. <laughs> The video, shot by artist Matthias Fritsch, captures a shirtless, muscular man dancing in a street rave. The man, who later became known as Techno Viking, is seen reprimanding another parade participant before leaving the crowd in a dance. The video gained massive popularity online after it was uploaded to the internet in 2001 and became one of the early, like, viral videos on YouTube after its launch in 2005. Techno Viking became an internet meme, with numerous parodies, remixes, and art inspired by the character. Yo guys, we just finished uh, the layer one. Let's get into the layer two. Spring-Heeled Jack Spring-Heeled Jack is a figure from English folklore, known for his bizarre appearance and ability to make extraordinary leaps. His legend dates back to the 19th century, particularly in Victorian England. The first reported sightings of Spring-Heeled Jack were in 1837 in London. Witnesses described a terrifying figure with a devil-like appearance, pointed ears, glowing eyes, and sharp metallic claws. He was said to be tall, thin, and capable of making incredible jumps, hence the name Spring-Heeled Jack. The most famous accounts involved assaults on women. In one notable incident in 1838, he allegedly attacked a young girl named Mary Stevens while she was walking to Lavender Hill. The next day, he supposedly jumped in the way of a carriage, causing it to crash. Reports of similar attacks spread, causing a wave of panic across London and other English cities. spring Hill Jack was also reported to breathe fire or blue flames, adding to his frightening persona. He was often described as wearing a black cloak or oilskin suit, which is scary. <laughs> but then he was never confirmed as being like a real person. Berserker at Stamford Bridge The story of the Berserker at Stamford Bridge is a legendary tale from the Battle of Stamford Bridge, which took place on September 25th, 1066. This battle was a pivotal moment in English history, marking the end of the Viking Age and paving the way for the Norman conquest of England. According to the saga and historical accounts, a single Norse warrior, 
often referred to as the Berserker, played a remarkable role in this battle. The English forces, led by King Harald Godwinson, confronted a Viking army led by King Harald Hardrada of Norway and the English king's brother Tostig. As the story goes, the Vikings were caught by surprise, with many of them not fully armored and some even across the river from the main forest. The English army sought to cross Stamford Bridge to attack the disorganized Vikings. However, they were impeded by a single Norse warrior who stood at the narrow crossing of the bridge. This warrior, reputed to be a berserker, fought with a ferocity and skill that was legendary. Berserkers were Norse warriors who are said to have fought in a trance-like fury, a characteristic that earned them their name, like berserking. This lone fighter at Stamford Bridge reportedly held off the English army for a considerable time, killing a significant number of enemies. He was only defeated when an English soldier floated under the bridge in a barrel and thrust a spear through the planks, mortally wounding him. The stand of the single warrior at Stamford Bridge is often celebrated for its symbolism of bravery and ferocity, and despite his eventual defeat, his actions allowed the remaining Viking forces to form up into a shield wall, although they were ultimately defeated. But yet nobody knows who this berserker dude was. Fulcanelli. Fulcanelli is a name that has intrigued enthusiasts of alchemy and esoteric lore for many years. He's famous as a master alchemist, and much of the interest in him centers around his true identity, which remains a mystery. He's best known for his two books on alchemy, Les Mystères des Cathédrales, The Mystery of the Cathedrals, and Les Demons Philosophales, Dwelling of the Philosophers. These works explore the hidden alchemical symbols and teachings supposedly embedded in Gothic cathedrals and other medieval European architecture. His interpretations and insights provided a new lens through which to view these historical structures, suggesting that they were more than just places of worship, but also repositories of secret knowledge. The true identity of Fulcanelli has been a topic of debate and speculation. Various theories have been proposed over the years, suggesting he could have been a specific individual known in science or esoteric circles, or even like a collective pseudonym for a group of people. But nobody really knows who Fulcanelli was. Agent 335 Agent 335 was a code name for a female spy during the American Revolutionary War, a member of the Culper Ring, which was a network of spies organized by Major Benjamin Talmadge, under the orders of General George Washington. Not much is known about her true identity, and even the name Agent 335 could have been a code to denote a female agent in the spy ring. Her exact role and contributions remain largely a matter of speculation, but she's believed to have played a significant part in gathering intelligence for the American cause. One of the most famous theories suggests that Agent 335 was instrumental in the exposure and arrest of British Major John Ander, who was collaborating with American traitor Benedict Arnold. Some, his some historians speculate that she might have been captured by the British and died in a prison ship. Though these details cannot be confirmed due to the secretive nature of espionage work at the time. John Titor John Titor claimed to be a time traveler from 2036, and he appeared on internet forums in 2000 and 2001. He said he was sent back to 1975 to get an IBM 5100 computer to fix future software problems. Titor stopped in 2000 for personal reasons, and shared detailed predictions about the future, including a US civil war and global changes. He described a government-built time machine in a 1967 Chevrolet Corvette. Many of his predictions didn't happen, leading most to view his story as a hoax or creative fiction. Despite this, John Titor became an internet legend, like he's pretty famous, sparking interest in time travel theories. William Shakespeare William Shakespeare was an American playwright, poet, and actor, widely regarded as one of the greatest writers in the English language and the world's preeminent dramatist. He was born in Stratford-upon-Avon in 1564 and died in 1616. Shakespeare's work included 39 plays, 154 sonnets, and two long narrative poems. His play has been translated into every major living language and are performed more often than those of any other playwright. His most famous plays include tragedies like Hamlet, Othello, King Lear, Macbeth, comedies like A Midsummer Night's Dream, What to Do But Nothing, and As You Like It, and histories like Henry V and Richard III. Shakespeare is also celebrated for his contributions to the English language, coining and popularizing many words and phrases we still use today. But despite his crazy fame, many aspects of his life are still a mystery, which is kind of crazy because he didn't really live like that long ago. But yeah, nobody really knows like his like life. Just crazy. Green Children of Woolpit The Green Children of Woolpit is a medieval story from Suffolk, England. It tells of two children, a boy and a girl, who appeared in the village of Woolpit with green skin, speaking an unknown language and wearing odd clothes. Initially, they would only eat raw beans. Eventually, they learned English and their skin lost its green color. They explained they came from a place with no sun called St. Martin's Land. The story, recorded by two 12th century chroniclers, remains a mystery and has been interpreted in various ways, including a folk tale or a garbled account of historical events, which is pretty cool. Caspar Hasser Caspar Hasser was a mysterious figure who appeared in Nuremberg, Germany in 1828. When he first arrived, he could barely speak and he walked with difficulty. Hasser claimed that he spent his entire childhood alone in a darkened cell. Hasser's story became a sensation and he was depicted as a feral child 
who had lived in isolation from human contact. He said he had been given bread and water by a mysterious person who had never revealed themselves to him. His past was unclear and he could provide no explanation for his early life or how he came to be in Nuremberg. His case attracted widespread attention and speculation, with theories ranging from him being of royal descent to the victim of abuse and neglect. However, his story was riddled with inconsistencies and over time people started to like doubt his claims. Tragically, Caspar Hasser's life was cut short. He died in 1833 from a stab wound under mysterious circumstances that have still never been fully explained. And his death added another layer of mystery to his already enigmatic life story. Man from Torrid The Man from Torrid is a popular urban legend about a mysterious traveler who arrived at Tokyo's Haneda Airport in 1954. According to the story, when the man presented his passport, it showed that he was from Torrid, a country that didn't exist. The man insisted Torrid was located between France and Spain and had existed for centuries. Baffled customs officials placed him in a hotel for the night, under guard while they investigated. However, by the next morning, he had inexplicably vanished from his locked hotel room, leading to speculations about, like, parallel universes and time travel. Despite his popularity, there's no verifiable evidence to support the theory, and it's widely considered an urban myth or a piece of modern folklore. Like, we don't even know if the story actually ever happened, but that's creepy, that's awesome, I love that. Axman of New Orleans The Axman of New Orleans was a serial killer active in New Orleans and surrounding communities, including Gretna from May 1918 to October 1919. The killer's identity remains unknown, and their crimes were characterized by the brutal breaking into homes, at nighttime of course, and attacking the residents with an axe, which often belonged to the victims themselves. The X-Men's attacks caused like a widespread fear throughout New Orleans. Adding to the bizarre nature of the case, the killer wrote a letter to the local newspaper in March 1919, stating that he would spare those who played jazz music in their homes. This led to a night where the city was filled with the sound of jazz, with people hoping to avoid becoming the next victims. The X-Men's motive, identity, and fate remain unsolved mysteries, and the case is a dark, enduring piece of New Orleans history. That's awesome. Not, okay, well, not the killing, but that's an interesting story. <laughs> Satoshi Nakamoto Satoshi Nakamoto is the pseudonym like name for the person or group of people who created Bitcoin, the first decentralized cryptocurrency, introduced in 2008 under a white paper titled Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. Nakamoto also devised the first blockchain database as a part of Bitcoin's implementation. In 2009, Nakamoto released Bitcoin's original software and participated in its early development with other volunteers until disappearing from online forums and correspondence in late 2010. Nakamoto's true identity remains unknown, and the reasons for their anonymity are a subject of much speculation. Various people have been speculated to be Nakamoto, but no conclusive evidence has ever been produced to confirm any of these theories. El Dorado El Dorado, initially referred to as the Gilded Man, is a legendary city or kingdom, fabled to be overflowing with gold, which enticed European settlers and explorers during the 16th and 17th centuries. The myth originated from the Musica people's ritual in Colombia, where a Sheftian, covered in gold dust, would dive into Lake Guadavida as an offering to the gods. This tale of riches spurred Spanish conquistadors to conduct numerous expeditions in South America, seeking the city of gold. Over time, El Dorado evolved from representing a man to a city and then to an entire kingdom. Despite extensive searches, El Dorado was never found, becoming a symbol of unattainable wealth and the human pursuit of ambition, inspiring countless works in literature and arts. Alright guys, that was Lair 2. Let's get straight into Lair 3 next. John Doe 24 John Doe number 24, a deaf and mute teenager found in Jacksonville, Illinois in 1945, faced an unjust fate as he was wrongfully deemed feeble-minded and sentenced to the harrowing conditions of the Lincoln State School and Colony. Despite enduring abuse and deplorable circumstances, he forged connections, shouldered responsibilities, and even found humor within the institution during his roughly 30-year stay. Journalist Dave Bakes' exhaustive research shed light on his life, while singer-songwriter Mary Chapin Carpenter, inspired by a New York Times article, wrote a song and provided a headstone for his previously unmacked grave. As a mysterious man neared the end of his life in the Sharon Oaks nursing home in Peroya, his one-time nurse, Donna Romine, remarked, Ah well, God knows his name, leaving a lasting testament to the enduring mystery and resilience of John Doe number 24. Man in the Hole The Man in the Hole refers to Amantino Manuela, a mysterious figure discovered deep within Brazil's Amazon rainforest in the late 1990s. Having lived in complete isolation for approximately 22 years, Amantino's story is one of remarkable solitude and survival. He had constructed a shelter, subsisted on a diet of foraged fruits and nuts, and hunted animals for sustenance. When found, he was in good health, though his reasons for, like, withdrawing from society still remain a mystery. 
given the language barriers that prevented effective communication, like he couldn't talk to anybody that found him. And the deep holes that he dug in the ground for trapping animals got him the name Man in the Hole. Because he would like use like holes to trap animals and like stuff like that, like live in a hole. Madgaster of Mattoon. The Madgaster of Mattoon, also known as the Anesthetic Prowler, was the nickname given to an unidentified individual or individuals who were believed to be responsible for a series of gas attacks in Mattoon, Illinois, during the summer of 1944. The attacks involved the use of an unknown gas that caused symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, and paralysis. Many residents reported smelling strange odors before falling ill. The attacks generated widespread fear and panic in the community, with some attributing them to a mysterious figure who was said to be lurking near victims' homes. Despite an investigation by law enforcement, the identity of the Madagascar was never determined, and some have suggested that the events may have been the result of mass hysteria or other natural causes. Count Saint Germain Count Saint Germain, also known as Comte de Saint Germain, was a mysterious man in the 18th century. What made him even more mysterious was his claim to have lived for a very, very long time, like we're talking like multiple centuries without getting old. He would tell stories about events from centuries ago as if he'd been there himself. This left people puzzled and wondering if he had some kind of special power. Some thought he was a trickster, while others believed he might be immortal. And his incredible age claim added an extra layer of mystery to his already like really intriguing life story. He hung out with famous kings like Louis the XV and Frederick the Great. But here's the thing, nobody knows where he came from or how he could do all these amazing things. Which makes his life really interesting and mysterious. Jill Perez Jill Perez was a 16th century Filipino soldier with a perplexing tale. He was stationed as a guard at the governor's palace in Manila during the Spanish colonial era in the Philippines in 1593. What makes his story astonishing is that one moment he was in Molina, and the next he found himself in Mexico City, a vast distance away with no memory of how he got there. Perez insisted he had just been in Molina just moments ago and had no explanation for this inexplicable journey. Authorities were bewildered and he was imprisoned in Mexico. His case sparked theories of teleportation or time travel, but the true cause of his sudden appearance in Mexico City is still a mystery. Green Boots Green Boots is a nickname given to a deceased climber on Mount Everest's main northeast ridge route. This climber is known by this name because of the green boots still visible on their body. That's so dark. While the climber's true identity has been a subject of debate, many people think that it might be Tsuang Samanla, an Indian climber who passed away during a tragic 1996 Everest expedition. The presence of green boots serves as a sad and eerie marker for other climbers on their way to the summit, highlighting the extreme dangers of high altitude climbing. Due to the challenging conditions in the death zone, quote unquote, on Everest, where oxygen levels are dangerously low, recovering bodies from this area is incredibly difficult, leaving climbers like Green Boots as lasting reminders of the risks involved in conquering the world's tallest mountain. Monsieur Chicane. Monsieur Chicane was a mysterious person in the 1800s, in France, known for speaking and writing really well, especially when criticizing the government. What made him even more interesting was that he kept his real identity a secret by using a fake name. Some people liked him and thought he was a hero for speaking up for like regular folks and wanting changes in society, while others thought he caused trouble. He's a bit like a historical puzzle because we don't really know who he was, but he had a huge impact on French politics by making people talk about important issues. Poe Toaster The Poe Toaster, also simply known as the Toaster, was a mysterious figure who appeared every year at the grave of American writer Edgar Allan Poe in Baltimore, Maryland. This enigmatic individual first began making visits in the 1940s, and continue the tradition for several decades until around 2009. Each year, on the night of Poe's birthday, January 19th, the Poe Toaster would arrive at the Westminster Hall and burying ground where Poe was buried, dressed in dark clothing with a black hat and scarf, and would leave a bottle of cognac and three red roses on the author's grave. The identity of the Poe Toaster was never revealed, and the ritualistic visits captivated the imagination of Poe enthusiasts and added an aura of mystery to this famous author's legacy. All right, that was layer three. Let's get into layer four, Summerton Man. The Summerton Man, also known as the Tamud Shud case, is one of the most famous unsolved mysteries in Australian history. In 1948, an unidentified man was found dead on Summerton Beach in South Australia. What makes this case mysterious is the complete lack of identification on the man's person, as all labels were removed from his clothing and there was no wallet or any form of identification. Adding to the intrigue, a small scrap of paper with the words Tanam Shud, meaning ended or finished in Persian, was found hidden in a hidden pocket of the man's pants. This led investigators to a copy of a rare book of Persian poetry in an unlocked car near the crime scene in which the same phrase, Tanam Shud, had been torn out. This suggested a possible link between the book and the car and the man's death. 
Shanti Devi Shanti Devi was a young Indian girl who claimed to have memories of a past life, making her a well-known case in the study of reincarnation. Born in 1926 in Delhi, India, she began speaking about her past life when she was only four years old. According to her account, she claimed to have lived in a different town, Mathura, and was married with children in a previous life. Shanti Devi's case gained significant attention in India, and her detailed recollections of her past life were extensively investigated. She provided names and details about her previous family, including her husband and son. Astonishingly, many of the details she shared matched real people and places in Mathura. Her story even attracted the interest of Matama Gandhi, who met with her. Gandhi was intrigued by her claims and supported further research into her case. Ultimately, an investigation led to the discovery of a family in Mathura that closely matched the details provided by Shanti Devi. The family had lost their daughter, Lugdi Devi, several years before Shanti Devi's birth. Lugdi Devi's husband and son were found to match the descriptions given by Shanti Devi. Countess of Desmond the Countess of Desmond, also known as Catherine Fitzgerald, was a remarkable and enigmatic figure in Irish history during the late 16th century. Born in the 16th century and known for her longevity, she is often referred to as the Old Countess of Desmond. Her life spanned several generations, and she allegedly lived to be over 120 years old. A very remarkable feat, especially for her time. The Countess is famous for her alleged longevity, and her story had become intertwined with the folklore and legend. Bodhidharma Bodhidharma, also known as the Daruma in Japan, was a legendary Buddhist monk who lived during the 6th century CE. He's often considered the founding patriarch of Zen Buddhism and is revered in both Zen and Shan Buddhism, which are closely related schools of Mahayana Buddhism. Bodhidharma is known for his legendary journey from India to China, where he played a pivotal role in spreading Buddhist teachings, particularly the practice of meditation. According to his tradition, he arrived in China and eventually settled at the Shaolin Monastery, where he spent nine years in deep meditation and introduced a form of meditation that laid the foundation for Zen Buddhism. One of Bodhidharma's famous teachings emphasizes, quote, direct pointing to the mind, and the idea of the enlightenment is not dependent on written scriptures, but is a direct and personal experience. He's often depicted with distinctive wide open eyes, which is symbolic of his wakefulness and mindfulness. Bodhidharma's life and teachings have had a profound and lasting impact on the development of Zen Buddhism in China and later in Japan. He remains a central figure in the history of Buddhism, but I guess not much about his actual life is really known today. Akhenaten Akhenaten, also known as Amenhotep IV, was an ancient Egyptian pharaoh who reigned during the 8th dynasty, which was about from 1353 to 1336 BCE. He is renowned for his radical religious reforms, particularly his introduction of a monotheistic belief system centered on the sun god Aten, making him one of the earliest recorded proponents of monotheism in history. During his rule, Akhenaten shifted the Egyptian religious landscape by relocating the capital from Thebes to a newly constructed city called Akhenaten, which is modern-day Amarna, where he promoted the exclusive worship of Aten. This shift in religious focus resulted in the suppression of traditional Egyptian gods such as the moon and the dismantling of their temples. Despite the significance of his reign, Akhenaten's reforms were met with resistance and were eventually reversed by his successors, returning Egypt to its polytheistic religious practices. And to this day, the remains of Akhenaten have never been found. Wolf Messing Wolf Messing was a notable figure born in 1899 in Poland and known for his extraordinary skills and psychic and mind-reading abilities. He gained fame for his seemingly supernatural talents, including telepathy, predicting the future, and influencing people's thoughts and actions. Messing claimed to have developed these powers during his early life and used them to perform remarkable feats on stage, often astounding audiences with his seemingly impossible abilities. He became especially well known during the mid 20th century, and his performances attracted the attention of both the public and scholars. While some skeptics questioned the authenticity of his powers, Wolf Messing's life and talents remain a subject of fascination and debate. Like, nobody knows if he was actually magical or just, you know, not, which I mean, <laughs> I think we all know, but, you know, it's cool because he tricked like everybody. Edward Kelly Edward Kelly, also known as Edward Talbot, was a fascinating figure in the late 16th century, known for his partnership with the famous magician John Dee. He claimed he could talk to angels and spirits, which was a big deal back then. Kelly and Dee worked together to communicate with these otherworldly beings using a crystal ball, trying to learn hidden secrets and spiritual insights. They even created a special language called Enochian, thinking that it was the actual language of angels. But things turned sour between them, and Kelly ended up in prison and died mysteriously in 1597. So he was basically just a con man. He was like one of the biggest con men in history, like that's like what he's like known for. But then it got him landed in prison. So it's kind of an L for him, bro. Sidney Gottlieb. Sidney Gottlieb, a chemist and pharmacologist, played a pivotal yet controversial role within the Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA, during the 1950s and the 1960s. He's best known for his leadership in the MK Ultra program a secretive initiative aimed at researching mind control and behavior modification. 
During his guidance, MKUltra conducted ethically questionable experiments involving the administration of mind-altering drugs like LSD to unwitting subjects, sparking significant ethical and legal controversies upon the revelation in the 1970s. Sidney Gottlieb's career stands as a haunting reminder of the moral and legal complexities surrounding government-sponsored research and clandestine activities during the Cold War era. Unknown Woman of Scenes The Unknown Woman of Scenes is an intriguing and mysterious figure from the late 19th century. She gained notoriety because of her death mask, a plaster cast made of her face after she was found drowned in the Seine River of Paris. Her serene and beautiful expression led to the creation of countless copies of her death mask, which were widely popular as a morbid artistic and cultural fascination. The mask became a symbol of beauty and the enigmatic allure of death, inspiring poets, writers, and artists, and it even found its way into the development of CPR mannequins. Which is crazy. Despite being anonymous, the unknown woman of the scene has left a lasting and eerie legacy in the realms of art and culture. That was Layer 4, let's get into Layer 5, let's go! Li Xingyuan Li Xingyuan was a legendary Chinese herbalist, martial artist, and purported super centurion who lived to an astounding age which remains a subject of fascination and debate. Born in 1677 or 1736, the exact date is unknown. <laughs> He claimed to have lived for 197 or even 256 years, although historical records suggest the former is more likely. Li Xingyuan is renowned for his deep knowledge of traditional Chinese medicine and herbs, and he reportedly attributed his longevity to a combination of herbal remedies, as well as a simple diet and practicing martial arts. Bros like, uh, bros like, uh, bros like Chris from Parks and Rec, dude. Do you guys like that reference to the hit sitcom from NBC, Parks and Recreation? Anyways, his remarkable age, as well as his alleged youthful appearance even in old age, made him a popular subject of fascination and admiration, although his extraordinary claims have also been met with skepticism among historians and researchers, so who really knows, bruh? Aristius Aristius is a character from ancient Greek legends and his story, as told by historian Herodotus, is both fascinating and mysterious. According to the tale, Aristius disappeared for a long time, presumed dead, but then reappeared, claiming he had been in a trance and had traveled to a distant land called the Isidonus. During his absence, he had composed epic poetry. The story is a blend of myth and history, leaving us uncertain about like how much of it is real. The idea of Aristius going into a trance and encountering a wise people in a distant land adds an aura of mysticism to this whole thing. So who really knows if it's real or not, man? Dead Pirate Roberts Dead Pirate Roberts, also known as DPR, was the synonymous leader of the Silk Road, an infamous dark net marketplace that operated from 2011 to 2013. The Silk Road was basically just like, you know, eBay for bad stuff. This mysterious figure was instrumental in creating and running the Silk Road, which facilitated the sale of legal goods and services, primarily drugs, using cryptocurrency for anonymity. Despite his notoriety, DPR's true identity remained unknown until his arrest in 2013. In reality, he was Ross Ulbricht, a young computer programmer. His case raised significant legal and ethical questions about online anonymity, the use of cryptocurrencies for illicit purposes, and the boundaries of law enforcement in the digital age. Albright was eventually sentenced to life in prison for his role in operating the Silk Road. Max Headroom Incident Guy The Max Headroom Incident involved an unidentified individual who hijacked television broadcasts in Chicago on two occasions in 1987. The hijacker wore a Max Headroom mask and appeared on the screen, delivering a bizarre and cryptic message while distorted video and audio effects surrounded him. The first incident occurred during a broadcast of the Doctor Who series, and the second incident targeted a local news station. The hijacker's identity remains unknown, and the motive behind the intrusions is still a mystery. The Max Hedrum incident is considered one of the most famous cases of broadcast signal intrusion and has left a lasting mark in popular culture, becoming a symbol of cyberpunk and media manipulation. Despite investigations, the perpetrator has never been caught, and the case remains unsolved. Bella Kiss Bella Kiss was a Hungarian serial killer who operated in the early 20th century. His crimes involved the murders of young women whom he lured through personal ads, typically targeting those who were looking for romantic relationships or employment. After their deaths, Kiss preserved the bodies in large metal drums filled with alcohol, effectively mummifying them. His macabre activities remained undetected for years until authorities stumbled upon his gruesome collection during World War I. However, Kiss managed to evade capture by enlisting in the Austro-Hungarian army under a false identity and disappeared leaving a really just like chilling legacy of unsolved murders and an enduring sense of mystery and horror associated with his name. Pralad Jenny Pralad Jenny, also known as Mataji, was an Indian Aztec who claimed to have lived without food or water for over 70 years. Born in 1929 in the Indian state of Gujarat, Jenny became widely known for his extraordinary claim of surviving solely on spiritual energy and sunlight. Bro really turned on the photosynthesis, bro. Insert the, uh, the rock meme of, uh, you know, the, the eyebrow. Hmm. 
<laughs> His case drew the attention of scientists and researchers leading to a series of controlled experiments in the 2000s to study his alleged ability to live without food and water. During these studies, Janney was closely monitored by medical professionals, and while he did show unusual physiological traits, the scientific community remained skeptical about his claims. Prolad Janney passed away in 2020, leaving behind a legacy of fascination and debate regarding the limits of human physiology and the potential for spiritual practices to transcend basic human needs. That was layer 5, let's get into the final layer, layer 6. Indrid Cold Indrid Cold is a mysterious figure associated with UFO and paranormal phenomena particularly within the realm of urban legends and conspiracy theories. He first gained attention in the 1960s when he was reportedly encountered by Woodrow Derenberger, a man who claimed to have had a bizarre encounter with an extraterrestrial being in West Virginia, USA. According to Derenberger, Indrin Cold was a humanoid figure with an eerie frozen smile who communicated telepathically and claimed to be from the planet Lanulos. Since then, Injured Cold has become a cryptic and enigmatic character in UFO lore and has been linked to various alleged encounters and sightings. His name has appeared in books, documentaries, and online discussions, contributing to his status as a mysterious and enduring figure in the world of paranormal and unexplained phenomena. Alexander Solonik Alexander Solonik, also known as Superkiller, was a notorious Russian organized crime figure and hitman who gained infamy in the 1990s. Solonik was known for his remarkable marksmanship and his involvement in a series of high-profile assassinations and criminal activities primarily in Russia and Europe. He was believed to have ties to various criminal organizations, including the Russian Mafia. Solonik's criminal career and evasive tactics made him a subject of fascination and concern for law enforcement agencies. He managed to escape from Russian prisons on two occasions, further adding to his mystique and the legend surrounding him. His life came to a violent end in 1997 when he was killed in a shootout with law enforcement authorities in Greece. Solonik's criminal exports and daring escapes have cemented his reputation as one of the most enigmatic and feared figures in the world of organized crime. Manti Tribesman The sighting of a mysterious half-naked figure running down a dirt track in Indonesia near Banda Aceh has sparked intrigue and speculation among viewers. Some have speculated that the man could belong to the mythical Manti tribe, rumored to be forest dwellers, but their existence remains unverified. In the video footage captured by a group of bikers, the bald man emerged from the trees, causing one of the bikers to fall while the figures printed away. The pursuit led the group to search the nearby bushes where they found a large stick the mysterious man had carried. The Manti tribe, if they exist, is believed to be smaller in stature than the average person and tends to avoid encounters with outsiders. While the only historical record of the Manti tribe dates back to the 17th century when two tribesmen were supposedly captured, most people consider them to be a legend. The video has garnered significant attention, with some suggesting similarities to the discovery of Homo floresiensis, a small ancient human species found on the island of Flores in Indonesia in 2003. Edward Mordrake Edward Mordrake was an apocryphal figure from the 19th century known for a rare medical condition known as Diprosopus, which means two faces. According to the legend, Mordrake was born with a second face on the back of his head, complete with his own set of eyes and a mouth that could reportedly whisper malevolent and disturbing thoughts to him. Despite his efforts to have the second face removed, it was said to be impossible to operate on. Mordrake allegedly suffered greatly from the tormenting voice and eventually committed suicide in his early 20s. Queen of Sheba The Queen of Sheba, also known as Belki, is a legendary figure celebrated for her wisdom and wealth in ancient texts, and like in the Bible and the Quran. According to these accounts, she ruled the Kingdom of Sheba, believed to be in the southern Arabian Peninsula. Her most famous tale involves her journey to visit King Solomon in Jerusalem, where she tested his renowned wisdom with riddles and gifted him with treasures. Impressed by Solomon's wisdom and his kingdom's opulence, the Queen of Sheba converted to his faith, which, praise God, man. The God of the Bible is the true God who can give you rest. Her story, a blend of history and legend, has inspired countless artistic and literary works, symbolizing the virtues of wisdom, wealth, and female leadership. Yet, the exact historical details of her life and the location of her kingdom are still a mystery. Also, bro, I looked up what she looks like, and I don't know, bro, she got a bad, bro, I don't know, some of these, some of these pictures, I don't know, man, she got a bad. King Kaloksai King Kaloksai is a mysterious and revered figure in the folklore of the Kurgs people. The enigmatic allure of his character stems from the absence of historical records or concrete evidence of his existence, leaving his life, indeed, just largely confined to the realm of oral storytelling. Nevertheless, his legends persist as captivating narratives that highlight his wisdom, just rule, and moral virtues. These tales, passed down through generations, carry an air of mystery as they continue to inspire and shape the cultural identity of the Kurgs people. King Kalexai's enduring allure lies in the enduring questions surrounding his authenticity and the enigmatic aura surrounding his legendary status. Adam Rayner Adam Rayner was a unique and mysterious individual who gained recognition for his extraordinary and unprecedented change in height during the early 20th century. Born in 1899 in Ostia, Hungary, modern-day Austria, 
Rainer initially had a relatively normal height, however his life took an unusual turn when he experienced a growth spurt in his late teens and early 20s. By the time he reached actual adulthood, Rainer had grown to be an astonishing height of 7 feet 8 inches. What makes Rainer's case even more perplexing is that he continued to grow even taller into his later years, eventually reaching a height of 7 feet 10 inches. This remarkable change in height made him one of the tallest people ever in recorded history. Rainer's condition was attributed to a rare medical phenomenon known as giantism, caused by an overproduction of growth hormone. Sergei Trechikov Sergei Trechikov, also known as Sergei Trechikov, was a significant figure in the world of espionage during the Cold War era. Born in 1956 in Russia, he worked as a high-ranking intelligence officer in the Russian Federal Security Service and his predecessor, the KGB. Trechikov is notable for his defection to the United States in 2000, where he provided valuable information about Russian espionage activities and intelligence operations. During his time as a spy, Trechikov operated under deep cover in various countries, including the United Nations mission in New York City, where he worked as a senior intelligence officer. His defection and subsequent cooperation with the US intelligence shed light on the inner workings of Russian intelligence and espionage efforts against the United States. Trechikov's revelations contributed to a better understanding of Russian spy tactics and served as a valuable resource for American counterintelligence efforts. And I'm not exactly sure why he's on the mysterious people iceberg. Like, I'm trying to find out why he's, like, mysterious or whatever. Like, I'm googling right now just, like, to double check, but I don't think there's anything, like, mysterious about him other than just the fact that he was, like, a double agent or whatever. Or that he defected to our side. I say our because I'm American. <laughs> My bad, guys. But, yeah, I don't really think there's... He just, you know, was a cool, you know, whatever. Okay, that was the iceberg! That was the Mysterious People Iceberg, guys. I hope you all enjoyed it. I had so much fun making this video. I hope all of you have a great night and sleep well. Sweet dreams.